Hey everyone, it's Lily or Cool Rice Bunnies. Happy New Year! With the new year, I decided to dive into a hobby I have been wanting to get into for a long time, mechanical keyboards. More specifically, customizing mechanical keyboards. So in today's video, I'm going to be making some custom keycaps out of resin for the very first time. Will I fail? Will they all be a success? Let's find out. <laughs> but first, a short resin supplies haul. I got these keycap molds from an Etsy shop called Amy Little Shops when they were running a 15% off Black Friday deal. This entire set of molds was only $18 and you can make keycaps with them using UV resin or regular epoxy resin. Keycaps come in a lot of different styles. My keyboard has DSA styled keycaps and can be switched out for whatever keycaps I like as long as they are for Cherry MX or cross keycap style switches. These molds are OEM styled keycaps, so they're a little bit taller than what I currently have, but I think they still worked out well. And as you saw, this set came with some really adorable paw print molds that I was super excited about. I ordered some other supplies, including two 100 milliliter reusable resin measuring and mixing cups, say that five times fast, this circular trinket tray mold with a lid, and these adorable video game controller molds. Since I'm getting back into resin, I ordered some new bottles from the Resin Epoxy store. Shout out to Amy Maid for the discount code. With that discount, this 70 ounce two part kit ended up being about $45 after shipping and handling. I also wanted to point out how well they packaged the resin. It came super safe and I am always appreciative of that. They also included very clear instructions on how to use this resin to get the best results. Personal protective equipment is super important when working with resin, so I bought some more nitrile gloves from Amazon. They don't fit as snug as my old gloves, which were extra smalls, but they still get the job done. If you're working with resin, it's important that you also work in a well-ventilated room, with a fan and open windows, and wear a ventilator mask. For today's video, I'm going to try using UV resin, and of course, I need my UV lamp. This one has multiple UV lights, which will help the resin cure fully through the clear molds. All right, time to start crafting. I decided to start out with the paw print molds because it seemed the easiest to me. Here I'm using some washi tape to clean any dust that's on the molds. Usually I'd use duct tape for this, but I couldn't find it. All right, gloves on and time for the resin. The first step is filling in the stem mold. You wanna do this slowly and carefully to make sure no air bubbles get trapped inside. After that, I popped it into the UV lamp for about five minutes. For the first paw print, I decided to use some light pink UV resin from Sophie and Toffee. I haven't used this in years and the resin was super thick, so I had to take off the cap and scoop out some with a dotting tool. You could also use a toothpick for something like this. For the next paw print, I went ahead and mixed together some clear UV resin, fine glitter, and chunky glitter in a lime green color to match the green escape key I currently have on my board. Again, you could use a toothpick to spread out the resin, but here I chose to use a silicone tool. It's easy to clean up because I just stick it in the UV lamp afterwards and peel off the cured resin. Since the Sophie and Toffee resin was so thick, uh, I wanted to mix my own pink resin with resin pigments. You can watch me fail at this as I was incredibly too shy with the white pigment and put in way too much red. I did try to lighten it up more and added some glitter too. Oh, and here's a tip. You can reuse plastic containers for mixing if it has a triangle with a number 5 on the back of it. Once cured, resin doesn't stick to this type of plastic. Now for the last paw print, I went for a clear resin with pink and chunky iridescent glitter. I thought this was so pretty. Like, look at it. After they were all filled in, I put the mold in the UV lamp for 5 minutes. For the rest of the mold, I mixed together some white resin. It was in this moment I remembered popsicle sticks existed and are good for mixing. For the last three paw prints, I decided to go with clear resin with a little bit of chunky glitter mixed in. 
to finish them off, I used a lighter to pop any bubbles that were on the surface. Now all that was left to do was put on the back part of the mold. You want to make sure that there's enough resin to touch this back part, so more resin is better than less. I had to go back in and add some more. A little overflow never hurt nobody. Then off to the UV lamp. Now it's time for some regular keycaps. I'll be using some beloved non-paper stickers of mine. Here I'm cutting down a sticker flake so it fits inside the mold. Now to repeat the steps. Fill the stem molds carefully with resin, pop any bubbles, and then lay down your first layer of resin to place the sticker in. Once that's done, cure for three to five minutes. For my Mamagoma and Rilakkuma stickers, I wanted to add some iridescent hearts and stars in the corners. A tweezer will be your best friend for something like this. Now time for some fun glitter. I mixed together pink and chunky glitter to match my other keys and I just glob that stuff in for a middle layer. For my green bunny key, I wanted to experiment with some hollow powder. I used a sponge to rub it onto the cured resin and sides of the mold. I filled that keycap with white resin and I'm not sure if that was the best decision or if I should have just used clear resin, but I thought the white resin would help bring out the hollow the best. The rest of the white resin was just used as a third layer for this keycap. And lastly, I mixed together some clear resin with fine iridescent glitter and filled the rest of the keycaps. All right, time to cure. I'm so excited. <laughs> um, but I let them cure in the UV lamp. See how the stems came out, I suppose. Okay, so one's a fail already, and I'll explain why. <gasps> that one's good. Okay, okay, okay. <gasps> that one's good. That one's good. Yay. Oh my gosh. And... That one's good, okay, yay. This one, unfortunately, uh, I think there were probably a lot of air bubbles, so um, there wasn't actually enough resin in it, but maybe I can fix this one. Wow, you hear that? No, oh, wow. Crack. <gasps> wow, so cute, so cute. <laughs> I'm all over the place. I'm just really excited. Can you guys tell? This one's so cute. Love. I love. Okay. Back with some straight nose pliers. And this is what you can use to just kind of break off the excess resin. Time for these. <gasps> wow. 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 <laughs> no, my Rilakkuma one. Okay, and it's a little sticky. That's so sad. <gasps> it was on the wrong one. That's such a silly mistake that I made. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. But there's no stem at all. Because the stem that I filled in wasn't in the right spot. I can't believe I did that. Such a silly mistake. <laughs> I 
have this sanding block. It has uh, different sides to it. You can use it dry or wet. I'm going to go sand down my keycaps in the bathroom so I can do it wet. Um, so I will be right back. But basically, yeah, I'll just, you know, I'll sand them down so that way they have smooth edges. All right, y'all, I am back with my first ever made custom keycaps. They have been sanded, so there's no more rough edges. They're all happy and ee, they're so great. So um, I kind of have them ranked right now from fails to sort of fails to, hey, you did a pretty good job. Like these are the best. Let's start with the fails. I'm really sad about these being fails because they look so good. But unfortunately, the little backside was not centered. So we have these really big chonky sides here that make it, basically it, it makes them unusable. So if I put this on my keyboard, it works, right? But if I hit the tab key, it's going to press down that escape key too. The side's so chonky here that it gets in the way. So I could put it somewhere over here, but it's going to do the same thing where if I press uh, the key next to it, they're both going to go down. So those two are fails, but it's okay. Like it was my first try. These ones, I say they're fails, kind of, but not really. Like I don't even know what I ranked them as. There is this more reddish pink one with the white. The sides are uh, still a bit chonky, but not too chonky because it still works. It's pretty flush here. The green one, I say that this one is a kind of fail because it looks great. However, just resin basics. I didn't fill the mold with enough resin. So you can see a lot of these air bubbles on the side. But it's all right because once it's actually in the keyboard, you don't really notice that. And then this one, because it didn't have the stem, but I was actually able to fix that. I just refilled the stem mold and um, stuck it back in and then popped in the UV lamp. And now it has a stem, so yay, happy. Um, the sides here are a little bit chonky, but it works. All of these keys, they, they pass. They are great. Again, I was able to save the one that didn't have the stem in the back. This is one of my favorites. That iridescent glitter is just everything to me. I'm not totally in love with how this one turned out, but it was nice to just see how the hollow came out. <laughs> All right, everyone, I'm going to end the video here. Let me know in the comments down below which keycap ended up being your favorite. Personally, for me, I really love this one and this green and white one, this one came out, they just uh, came out so nicely. <laughs> if you're into mechanical keywords, also let me know in the comments. I'd love to talk to you about it. And yeah, look forward to more resin videos in general. And that's really it. Thank you all so much for watching and I will talk to you soon. Bye.